We're now going to review some properties of the equilibrium situation. Uh, so basically what we I will go through what we have learned so far. There is an equilibrium macro state uh, that the system reaches as we allow the system uh, to um, evolve in an undisturbed manner. The equilibrium macro state is time independent. So that's the first thing we have learned. When we reach the equilibrium macro state, um, there is no preference for time. And the equilibrium macro state will be characterized with some macro parameters, uh, parameters like uh, pressure, volume, temperature, etc. So we find that the corresponding macro parameters will also be time independent, are constant in time, except uh, with small fluctuations. All right. And what is the equilibrium macro state? It is the most random uniform or disordered state. And we talked about why that's the case, because the number of configurations that correspond to this macro state is maximized. Therefore, the probability or the likelihood of getting this configuration uh, of this state becomes uh, maximized. Uh, another thing we talked about is starting from a non-equilibrium situation that was either prepared by external intervention or due to a rare fluctuation that occurred uh, in a long period of time, we find that the state, the equilibrium macro state we reach is independent of what happened in the past. So the equilibrium macro state is independent of its path history. So it doesn't matter how we get to the equilibrium macro state, the, the equilibrium macro state is the same. It's the most random, disordered or uniform state. And again, uh, when we reach the equilibrium macro state, uh, the, it is characterized by a few macroscopic parameters, the macro parameters. Equilibrium pressure, equilibrium volume, equilibrium temperature, for example. There are few parameters. Now, uh, this equilibrium macro state, when we apply it to the uh, ideal gas that is contained in an isolated box in this manner, uh, if we have reached the equilibrium state, we have the most uniform or even distribution of gas molecules inside this chamber, uh, inside this box. So um, the total volume is uh, V then if the system is isolated, we will have total energy E and we have capital N number of identical molecules inside this box. 
then we can say that the average energy per molecule epsilon bar will be the total energy E divided by N. Energy is distributed uniformly over the gas molecules, uniformly distributed energy. Of course, we will have small fluctuations around this average value. And if you ask me how many molecules are there in the subvolume Vs, okay, so this could be half of the volume of the box on the left or a quarter of the volume of the box on the left, something like that, some volume V sub, uh, how many molecules are there in this volume? So the average number of molecules that are in the subvolume V sub S, since I have a totally uniform distribution, will be capital N multiplied by the volume of the region of interest divided by the total volume. So I have this even distribution of gas molecules inside the container. Now, regarding the uh, fluctuations uh, around the equilibrium macrostate, so the macroscopic parameters will have uh, small fluctuations. The fluctuations are small The probability of observing a large fluctuation is very low and it becomes even lower as the number of particles increase. But one can measure or detect these fluctuations uh, if the system is small. That's one possibility. So if you have a small number of particles, you're going to have a very uh, large fluctuations. For example, if you have one particle in this box, it can be on the left or on the right, and you will see in the number of molecules on the left hand side, very large fluctuations. It's either zero or one. That's easily detectable. Um, if the system is large, uh, there will still be fluctuations or we can detect them using sensitive uh, methods. We're going to talk about uh, fluctuations at equilibrium uh, for a number of systems uh, in the upcoming videos. So there will be a few examples for that. So let's uh, remind ourselves about this uniform distribution of energy. This is an important result. And the uniform distribution of particles in the box. So that if you have uh, an S bar, the number of particles on the in the side where I have subvolume Bs and S bar the average number of molecules in, in the subvolume Bs will be capital N multiplied by Vs divided by the total volume V. Alright so once again the equilibrium macrostate is time independent uh, once you reach the equilibrium state, there is no preference to, to time. So um, as you stay in the macro state, if you go forward in time or backward in time, as long as you are in the equilibrium macro state, uh, there is no time preference. Uh, the corresponding macro parameters are few. Uh, pressure, volume and temperature, for example, they are constant in time with small fluctuations. And those fluctuations are detectable if you use sensitive methods or if you make the system very small, then there will be uh, relatively larger fluctuations which are easily observable.
The equilibrium macro state we reach is the most random, disordered or uniform state and uh, how we reach the equilibrium macro state e either coming from a uh, non-equilibrium state that was achieved using an external intervention or due to a rare large fluctuation spontaneous fluctuation uh, it doesn't matter the equilibrium macro state is the same it's independent of its path history it's always the most random disordered uniform state.